So we just went through the introduction and we kind of looked at the graphing calculator and what can that can do to help us. Uh, but what if we don't have a graphing calculator and we want to graph this thing anyway? Well, we can look at this from what we've learned. We know that this plus 4 is actually a shift left. And we're not sure how far left we're going to shift. And we know that this 3 is going to make us a little bit, um, shall we say, steeper. So we want to be able to graph this thing, state the domain, state the range, find the x-intercept, and find the y-intercept. Well, finding the y or finding the x-intercept is pretty easy. You want to know where y is 0. So if y is 0, we would have y is equal to the square root of 3x plus 4. And if you take that and you would square both sides, so then 0 is equal to 3x plus 4. And so you would subtract 4 from both sides, so negative 4 is equal to 3x. And then you divide both sides by a 3, and so you get negative 4 thirds is equal to x when y is 0. So negative 4 thirds is negative 1 and 1 third. So we have a, st a point. And we aren't shifting up and down at all, so that is probably our starting point there. And so that's how much we shifted left. So we're at negative 1 and 1 third puts us about there for our first point. And then if we check and see where we are at negative 1, so if we put a negative 1 into this creature, you get negative 1, so that's 3 times and let's fill this in, negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 would be a negative 3 plus 1, which would, or plus 4, which would leave us at 1. So our next point would be at negative 1 would be at 1. And you can see that it is going to be fairly steep to begin with. And then we can take that out and we can see what happens at 0. And this will, in fact, if we put a 0 in for x, tell us what our y-intercept would be. So I put a 0 in here, and 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4. That would give me a 4. So at the point 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, you can see how wide this is going to start out being. Um, then we'll just plug in a 1 and see what happens there. We might be too wide for our graph at this point. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7. So this is the point 1 and 7, and yes, we are... In fact, above our graph, so 1, that's 5, 6, 7, puts us kind of up here. But you can see how we are coming out of this now and going to start leveling off with our graph. So if we wanted to go back and state the domain, the domain is all the x's we can be. You can see that our x's will never go any lower than a negative 1 and 1 third but they will go on forever in the positive direction. So by stating the domain here, our domain would be starting at negative 1 and 1 third and going to infinity. The range, well, the range is never going to go below 0. Right? We're never going to get below the x-axis because we have no shift going up and down. And so our range would start at 0, and it would go to positive infinity. And the x-intercept uh, we had gotten already, and it's in our table there. So the x-intercept is where we are on the x-axis. The x-axis, we are at the point negative 1 and 1 third, 0. And the y-intercept is where we are on the y-axis, and we're on the y-axis at 0. Four. So we can use that information to help us graph the, um, the square root function. So let's take a look at one more of these and then call this video kind of done. Um, so let's look at this one. We again wanted to state the domain, the range, find the x-intercept, the y-intercept. Again, we have a shift. We're moving now this time right. We are shifting right. And we're taking a 3 halves, so we're slightly steeper than our normal y equals square root of x, um, but not a whole bunch more steeper. So we can find our x-intercept. We are, again, we're not shifting up and down, so our x-intercept is probably our beginning point. So if we fill in 0 for y, that should give us our x-intercept. So 0 is going to be equal to the square root of 3 halves x minus 1. 
So 0 when you square both sides would be equal to 3 halves x minus 1. You add 1 to both sides, so 1 is equal to 3 halves x. And then you flip and you multiply both sides by 2 thirds. And you end up with 2 thirds is equal to x. And that would be our x-intercept, so we're at 2 thirds, which is right about there, and 0. So that's 2 thirds, 0. We found our x-intercept. Now we can find our y-intercept if we'd like. We can put in 0 for, for x. And so that would give us a square root of 3 halves times 0, right, times 0 minus 1, so 3 halves times 0 minus 1 would just be a negative 1. And so this point is going to be 0, negative 1. So at 0, we're at negative 1. No, that would be the square root of negative 1, and the square root of negative 1 would be imaginary my bad. So we can't actually find this, so when x is 0, we don't really have a y-intercept. Our y-intercept would have been somewhere imaginarily down here, but we don't have it because, again, we're square rooting and we're not dealing with the imaginary parts of graphs. Um, so then from there we're ready to move forward, and so I would try a 1. If I put a 1 in this creature, so I fill in my 1 where the x would be. I get 3 halves 1 minus 1, so that's 3 halves minus 1, which would be equal to 1 half, and I, so I want the square root of 1 half, which is not going to be very pretty. So then I can try a 2, so I'm going to put a 2 in here. So 3 halves times 2 would be 3, 3 minus 1 would be 2, and so now I want the square root of 2. Again, not real easy to graph. So then I can try, let's try a 4 in there. And I'm doing 4 because I want to take 3 halves, and so I'm going to be dividing by 2, so I want an even number. So uh, that would be 3 halves times 4 minus 1, and that would make that... 6 minus 1, which is 5, so that's going to be, if you put a 4 in there, that's going to be the square root of 5. I'm not getting any really easy numbers to graph. I know that the square root of 2 is closer to 1 than it is to 2, because um, 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is 1. So I know I'm between, at 2, I'm between 1 and 2, but I'm closer to the 1. And square root of 5, well, 2 squared is 4, so I'm a little bit more than 2. And I can kind of graph this thing in here. And I'm going to be going that way. I could keep plugging and chugging until I got a whole number, but you can just kind of guesstimate your graphs. Um, state the domain and range, then. We can go back to that. The domain is all the x's that we can have. So our x's can't go any smaller than 2 thirds. So we're going to start at 2 thirds and that we are actually on that point, and we're going to go all the way up to infinity. And the range is everything that y's can be, so the y's again start at zero, and they would go all the way to infinity as well. So that is stating your domain, the range, the domain again starts at two-thirds and goes all the way to infinity, the range starts at zero and goes all the way to infinity, the x-intercept is at two-thirds zero, and the y-intercept um, would not be, we would not have a y-intercept it would be some imaginary point.